Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today I am uh, responding to a Friday challenge that we had last week. And uh, a user had requested um, from a previous blog post that I had done saying, um, I, I understand how to uh, ignore zeros when creating my average if um, or average with, you know, to ignore zeros, but what if I have a non-contiguous range? What if my range is C, E, J, uh, G, uh, I, and K? Um, and you can see if we go in here and we type in average if, um, and we highlight these ranges by holding my control key down, uh, and it looks like I got one extra one in there of H5, so let me delete that, um, and do comma quotes greater than zero, end quotes, um, you see, I get an error. Um, Excel is saying, hey, these commas are different parts of the function. You've entered way too many of them. What are you doing? So I thought, well, we should just be able to come in and add parentheses around these as well. And uh, we it works, but it doesn't work, right? It's giving me a value because uh, it seems that average if does not work with non-contiguous rows. So it is a problem. How do we go about fixing that? That was the challenge. Okay, let's show you two different solutions. Um, the first one is to create some helper uh, criteria range. This was submitted to uh, by a user named Ken on our blog, and uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, this was a great solution. It is using average ifs, so um, what we would do is we'd say equals average um, ifs, and this is going to be our average range right here um, in, call, in row 5. And so we're going to just do the whole range, and we are going to do an average criteria. First one being in this range, it has to be greater than 0. So we do that by doing quotes, greater than 0, end quotes. And then the second criteria is in column or row B6 uh, through K5. So let me just highlight that and do a comma. We're going to say um, that it also has to be that there is an X in that row. Uh, and we end that, and we get a divide by 0. But let's go ahead and fix that, because um, if we put in some X's in here, uh, we should uh, get our values. So what it is doing is it's uh, going to do our range here in blue. That's our average numbers. The second one is in that same row. We're going to see if any of those are greater than zero than they want. They will be included in our average. And then third, any of those um, columns that have an X in them in the row B6 through K6, those are the only ones we want to include. So all these other ones out here are not being included. So if I come out here and I type a 4 in that one, you notice my number did not change. Uh, if I change the 0 to a 4, my average will change. If I add another 0 in, it does not change. Um, and so you can see that that is working. So that was a great formula, Ken. Thank you. Uh, pretty simple um, and easy. And uh, But what if you didn't want to do all of these x's here? Can we create a formula that just houses uh, our average if right in the formula? And uh, this was um, Barry Houdini is an awesome uh, Excel MVP out on the Mr. Excel uh, forums. Had this as one of the solutions, and Colin Legg had a blog post where I saw this uh, uh, formula as well and uh, let's go ahead and show you how that works so your average is typically what you're going to do is you're going to sum up um, all of the different values and so what we want to do is we want to sum a non-contiguous range and sum works with that so we can just go ahead and do that um, but what your average normally is is it's a sum of a range divided by the count of the values that you want to count um, in that average and so what we're going to do there is we have we can sum up those different values in here uh, in our columns that we want and then we need to create a counter of how many do we want to divide it by um, and so let's go ahead and take a look at that and uh, what we want to do is they used a uh, cool formula of index and you can find lots of uses on this on the blog as well and what they wanted to do is use a frequently unfrequently used um, a uh, function called frequency. I'm going to put another parenthesis in there since I'm going to provide it with non-contiguous data. Uh, and so I'm just going to go over here and click on the cells that I want by holding the control key down. And I now have my non-contiguous range for frequency. And if I hit comma, now we're going to give it the bins. So what frequency does is it says over a given range, put things into different bins and count them. So what's the frequency of the bins? And so we want to do a bin of zero 
and everything else. So the first number it's going to read, it's going to return two numbers frequency. It's going to return um, a value of all of the times that it is zero, and then it has a comma, and it's going to return a second value of the ones that are greater than zero. And so uh, since index will return one of those two numbers that is given here, and this is our count, index, we want to return that second one because frequency is going to first put this into bins of zero and then greater than zero. So what we want to do is just say return the second one in our index formula by doing a comma two, hit enter, and uh, you can see it, it is working there. If I come over here and I put four in my column of B, it doesn't change. If I put a four in my uh, unit two column, it does change. If I change some of these to zeros, uh, you can see the zeros are not affecting the average if that we created by using a combination of sum and index. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at um, how that is working with the evaluate formula. So you can go up to your formulas ribbon. You can click on evaluate formula button here in the formula auditing section. And what you'll see here is it is going to sum those five rows. And so that is the first part of it. And that's giving us a value of six. That is the four and the two. And then the frequency is going to look at those same columns. It's going to convert those to a uh, absolute range. And it's going to put them into different bins of zero and non-zero. So you can see it returns a three. So there's three zeros. And there's two cells that are non-zeros. And the index formula it says of this array, or let's return the second value. So not the three, but the two. So it's going to return a two, and six divided by two is three. And there's the six divided by two and three. And so that's our average. Now, um, so to do it, to ignore zeros, ignore blanks, um, try out that sum and index and frequency combination chart. Also, the average ifs works very well. Thanks very much, Ken, for that uh, simple solution as well. Uh, once again, I appreciate everybody's feedback on the Friday challenges. Um, if you have a challenge that you'd like us to post out there, please send it to me um, on my contact form. Also, consider subscribing to my video channel so you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.